Why is the climate crisis controversial? And why is hope being overlooked as a catalyst for change? In my work at a carbon utilization company called Carbon Upcycling Technologies, I've learned about the immense potential CO2 has. The goal of our company, as well as the carbon utilization industry, is to change the reputation of CO2 from a liability to a resource. Companies like ours are using CO2 to build their products while simultaneously removing it from the atmosphere. It's pretty incredible technology. The linear economic system that most of us are familiar with is based on a take-make-waste model. A good example of this is the fast fashion industry. The carbon utilization industry works towards a circular economy, or an economy based on the goals of reducing waste, increasing longevity of products, and renewing natural systems. A complementary example of this would be a high-quality fashion company that collects used clothing and reuses the material for future products. Now, I believe that it's possible to change the discourse on the climate crisis. The successes of companies working towards a circular economy exemplify why we need to stop viewing environmental sustainability as the opposite to economic prosperity. But first, we need to redefine the problem of climate change. Showing statistics just isn't enough. We need to start putting the environment at the center of our personal interests. It is apathy that is propagating the destruction of our environment. So I'd like to, I'd like to share a personal story um, that can help put the climate crisis in perspective. In the summer of 2017, my mom was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I remember the moment she told me as one of the scariest I'd ever experienced. I was so overwhelmed with uncertainty and worry. And this story is, is not easy for me to share. Don't worry, though. My mom is doing well, and I am so thankful she gave me permission to share her story in my TED Talk, because I'm sharing it as part of a message that is bigger than us all. I am sharing this as part of a metaphor for the well-being of our environment. I believe that we need to care for Mother Earth in the same way we would for our actual mothers. Almost every day, I wish I could go back to the moment just before I found out my mom has a brain tumor. But once you find out something's wrong, you can't simply ignore it. One conversation, one piece of information can change the way you see and do everything. We know that something is wrong with our environment, but too many of us are apathetic to this. Recently, I completed a thesis on the effects of water insecurity on Canadian First Nations reserves, and my research was led by literature on the deeply rooted connection of Indigenous peoples to the environment. The traditional knowledge of Indigenous peoples should not be overlooked, especially in discussions regarding the environment. In this research, I found that nature is often regarded as feminine and motherly in many of these Indigenous cultures. For instance, water is viewed as having life and spirit, and therefore connected to women through their role as life bearers. Now, you may be wondering why I'm telling you all this, but I promise this association is more relevant than it may seem. My mom is the person that cares for our family. She's the center of everything we do. And I found this sense of clarity between my personal connections, or my personal experiences, and those of the indigenous peoples. Uh, indigenous peoples fight for the preservation of Mother Earth. And preservation of Mother Earth. Um, yeah. And from all of this, from the, these, all of these experiences, I learned that it takes only a moment of empathy to inspire change, but it takes hope to start a movement. Now, we have the ability to start a movement and the economic means to do so, but we need to reprioritize our values and reallocate our investments. Recently, we saw massive amounts of money donated in record time with the goal of repairing the Notre Dame Cathedral after it endured a devastating fire. However, there is not the same dedication to the fall of natural landmarks. And this had me wonder, at what point in the development of our Westernized culture did we lose our environment, or connection to the environment? And how do we reestablish it? There is an overabundance of cognitive dissonance when it comes to our actions towards the environment. 
um, we, when we have to choose between conflicting beliefs and behaviors, dissonance occurs. I mean, how many of us have thrown out a recyclable plastic bottle when we couldn't find a recycling bin? I definitely have, and it's because it's more convenient. For the most part, we know what is good and bad for the health of our environment, but we're not always making the right decisions. We need to stop putting our environment at risk by changing our behaviors to, act, to match the belief that the environment is worth saving. Everyone has a part to play in this. We can all do more for the environment, whether that's just a little bit more or a lot more. Learning about my mom's tumor is similar to the narrative of climate change in society. We discussed her signs and symptoms until they were completely understood. We update those discussions after each doctor's visit. We have photographic evidence in the form of brain scans. Now, even though I don't experience the tumor myself and I can't see it directly, I believe it's there. We have been discussing climate change for years and we understand the signs and symptoms. We feel the effects. We're updated regularly on new information and we also have photographic evidence that it exists. It seems odd that some of us still don't believe it's real. Now, no one knows exactly what caused my mom's tumor and there are a few viable treatments. But there is substantial evidence that wasteful human activity is causing the degradation of our environment. We have the solutions for this. Environmental champions and, and innovative solutions can't manage the magnitude of our wasteful society alone. To make real change, we need to adjust our mindsets and align our actions with our beliefs. Now, I know that not everyone will have the same path that I had in finding my passion for climate change. But what we really need for, to attain a truly sustainable and healthy future is for every person to engage emotionally in climate change initiatives in the same way we would for our personal interests. Through emotional detachment, we've built up a wall between our materialistic, carbon-intensive world and the natural environment. We need to start breaking that down and repairing our relationship. We need to reestablish our emotional connection to nature. For me, this includes reminding myself what's at stake. My favorite memories include fishing with my dad, backpacking in the mountains with friends, and swimming in glacier lakes with my brother. Now, I don't know what my life would be like without these memories, and I don't want to imagine a world where my future children won't get to experience these things. We need to use our collective strengths rather than pitting our diversity against each other. Everyone has a role to play in mitigating climate change. We need the resilient mindsets of people from the energy sector, the innovation from carbon capture and utilization companies, and the traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples. We need to have faith in each other's strengths and start using them to reduce our environmental footprint. I am privileged to have my mom in my life. My mom encourages me when I'm at my lowest, supports all of my endeavors, and cheers the loudest when I succeed. But the environment holds a special place in my heart as well, the same place I hold the love for my mom. Nature clears my head when I step outside for fresh air, renews my perspective when I watch a sunrise, and humbles me when I look up into a clear, starry night. But like my mom, the, the, uh, the environment is ill. Upon learning about my mom's diagnosis, the first things I asked were, what can be done and how can I help? My family and I didn't panic, but instead we remained hopeful. We were optimistic that from this unfortunate circumstance, there would be positive outcomes and we envisioned a healthier future. This is something that can be applied to the climate crisis. We have an incredible opportunity to make ourselves better and strive for a cleaner world. But we've come to the point where we need to decide if we're going to commit to repairing the damage we've caused the environment or if we're going to continue in our materialistic, single-use ways. And as we all know, both have very different outcomes for the human race. We have the opportunity to develop, de-risk, research, implement solutions, Policy reform is a start to supporting and promoting environmentalism. But this process is slow, and environmental activists are screaming for more aggressive policy changes. 
That is why it is time for us all to take matters into our own hands and work together to reduce the risk that climate change poses. Let's focus on what we can do now to change our own behaviors. No action is too small. Recycle what you can, buy green, invest in cleaner initiatives. No change you make is insignificant, and others' poor choices should not sway you to thinking that your impact is overridden. Um, that your impact is overridden. The climate crisis should not be controversial. It should be a challenge that brings us all together and is embraced with a vision of a more successful, dynamic, safe world. If we want to keep enjoying our fascinating, beautiful, wild nature, we need to start thinking about our actions. Being hopeful does not discount the severity of the climate crisis, but rather emphasizes our vision to change our current behaviors. We all have the potential for improvement. We can panic about the crisis, or we can harness hope to mitigate the effects of climate change. Because if we were to care for our Earth the way we care for our mothers, we could save our future. After all, no matter where you live, what industry you work in, or what your political beliefs are, when you find out your mother is suffering, you find the solutions and you fight for her. Thank you.